Today I'm going to show you how to make this amazing orchid cake, which just so happens to be brown butter vanilla on the inside. My favorite flavor. Let's get started. The first thing we have to do is brown our butter. It needs to warm up, brown, and then cool in the fridge. So I'm going to take two sticks or about 225 grams of unsalted butter and place that into a small saucepan over medium heat. My butter's browned to this beautiful golden color. It really changes the character and adds a lot of depth of flavor. I'm gonna transfer this to a medium bowl and then place it in the fridge so it can chill down because I'm gonna whip it up. Look at this color. You can see all of the milk solids have kind of caramelized the heat and they taste amazing. It just gives us beautiful aroma. We're gonna sift the dry ingredients together. So that's one and two thirds cups of all-purpose flour, one heaping teaspoon of baking powder, one heaping quarter teaspoon of baking soda, and a generous pinch of salt, as well as one and one thirds cups of granulated sugar. Give it a whisk and we're gonna set aside. So for the wet ingredients, I have my browned butter, which is at room temperature, but still liquidy, and that's totally fine. Now I'm mixing together my half a cup of sour cream, half a cup of whole milk, three egg whites, three teaspoons of a good vanilla, because the brown butter has all these beautiful specks in it, I'm actually gonna add a little bit of vanilla bean paste as well. Vanilla bean paste has no alcohol, but it does have the vanilla seeds, so it gives you the full visual of the vanilla as well as that wonderful taste. Give it a quick whisk and set aside. It smells really nice already. Now all we have to do is pour the wet into the dry and give it a good whisk. Look how beautiful this batter is. It's kind of mesmerizing. Take a stick of cold butter, run it around the edge and the bottom just so you completely coat the pan. That little bit of butter is going to hold the flour on and the cakes will release beautifully. If you're having difficulty releasing cakes, here's my advice. Besides buttering and flouring, let the pans sit for like five minutes, just five minutes after they come out of the oven, and then dump them out onto that wire rack. If you let them sit for too long, things can harden up again, and that's where the problems start. But if it's right out of the oven, the cake is so tender that that can crack as well. So just give it five minutes, then dump it out. It should be fine. I'm using the kitchen scale to make sure each layer is exactly the same. And while they bake, I'm gonna move them around halfway in the oven because my oven has some hot spots, even though it's brand new. So each layer is like 505 grams, give or take five grams. So now we're ready to pop these into the oven right after we do the most important thing, which is add baking strips. So baking strips are just wet fabric strips that you wrap around the edge of your pan, and what they do is cool the edge of the cake layer down during baking, so the center and the outside cook at the same time, and they rise evenly, giving you a flat layer with no caramelization on the outside, meaning it's not gonna be burnt and kind of hard on the outside, it's gonna be really pillowy soft and beautiful. I'm gonna pop these into the oven at maybe like 345, for about 35 minutes or until the edges are pulling away from the cake pan and the center is springy. While my cake's baking in the oven, I'm gonna start my browned butter, Italian meringue buttercream. So tasty, you're gonna love it. Four egg whites into a very clean bowl with a new clean whisk attachment. Healthy pinch of salt and a couple dashes of cream of tartar. And you're ready to mix. Into a small saucepan, I'm adding in one third of a cup of water and one heaping cup of granulated sugar. I'm gonna mix it up just a little bit until the sugar is dissolved and then heat it over medium high heat until it reaches 240 degrees Fahrenheit. Once your eggs are frothy, add in your third of a cup of granulated sugar. Once your meringues reach the soft peak stage, you're ready to drizzle in your 240 degree molten sugar. You're gonna run your mixer until it's room temperature. So right now, this sugar is really warm and it's gonna melt the butter into a pool. This has to be at room temperature so the butter will keep its consistency and you'll end up with a butter cream, not a butter soup. My meringue is at room temperature and so pretty. I love these peaks you get in Italian meringue. This is totally usable, by the way. You can make many delicious things with Italian meringue and no butter added. However, for our purposes, we'll be adding in a pound of browned butter a little bit at a time while the mixer is running, and I am switching to a paddle attachment. The color is insane. I love this caramel color. It's like a toffee. 
My Italian meringue browned buttercream is all done and delicious. And I'm gonna do another batch for the outside because this cake is gonna be covered in beautiful orchids and I don't want those brown flecks in there. We're gonna repeat the same process all over again, just with butter that has not been browned, but is at room temperature. I let these cake layers cool for about four minutes in the pan, and now I'm gonna dump them out. But before I do that, I want you to see that it's totally flat on top. That's why cake strips are amazing. Yay, that's a great, perfect, nice, soft layer. As you can see, these are completely flat and totally uniform. They're all the same height which is just nice when someone takes a piece of cake, sees that it's all the same, and each bite is consistent. There's not one sad layer in the middle or on the bottom that's all squished in. Hmm. We're gonna let these cool to room temperature, and then we're gonna get to decorating our cake. So the orchid stems are gonna be made with candy melt. I love using candy melt because you don't have to temper it. You can melt it really easily, and it cools and hardens right away. Color the Italian meringue I'm using for the orchids. I used mostly gel food colorings, but I also used some matcha powder for the buds and for the leaves because I love the hue it gives. I'm making two different sized flowers for this cake. The small cake is using a 127 tip for most of the petals. Pull the tip out and then bring it back into the center and create three of those petals. Then starting at the top, you're going to create a semicircular petal that's mostly flat. There's two of those, one on each side. You can use a toothpick to daub some orange or yellow buttercream in the very center for the pollen, and then a 401 tip to create those two interesting orchid petals that kind of stick out at the center. The larger orchid is exactly the same, except the petals use a 120 tip, which is slightly larger. The 401 tip is still totally fine. This is optional, but I created some detail work using purple with a toothpick just daubing on little points to create kind of that speckled look you see on a lot of orchids. I thought it brought some more depth in and I really liked the effect. Just make sure you chill the orchid before you do that so that it's manageable. Otherwise it's too soft and it'll kind of fall apart. Once you're done, leave them in the freezer just to chill so that you can handle them when you place them onto the cake. Transfer your green candy melt into a piping bag, snip the tip off, and then pipe some stems onto a sheet of parchment paper. It'll dry really quickly and you can handle it carefully to place those onto your chilled cake when you're ready. Assembling this cake is really easy. All you're gonna do is pipe or smear some buttercream onto the first layer, plop the next layer on top, repeat the process, then pipe or smear a thin layer of buttercream to cover the cake completely. Use a bench scraper to scrape the sides smooth and an offset spatula to smooth the top. We're gonna add a second layer of white Italian buttercream on right now and repeat the same process all over again. Give it a really nice smooth. After you're done smoothing the cake, pop it into the fridge and let it chill so it's nice and set. It'll make it much more forgiving if any mistakes are made when you're placing the flowers. I sketched my leaves onto a sheet of paper just so I could get an idea of the composition. Then I used that as a guide for a line drawing that I just etched into my chilled cake. Use a palette knife to apply the green buttercream and just smoothed it out. Doesn't have to look perfect. I kind of like the painterly effect you get from seeing all the palette strokes. Think about where you want the flowers to go. Then daub on some buttercream where they'll be attached. Very gently press the chilled flowers into the buttercream. At the very end of the stem, I actually had piped some buds that I just used the 127 and 120 tips with to create little beetle-shaped buds. Okay, so before I devour this cake, let's have some real talk. You might not wanna go crazy and do this whole orchid extravaganza. I thought the cake was beautiful just with the browned buttercream. It had these beautiful flecks of vanilla bean and the caramelized butter. So pretty just on its own. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button and thanks for watching.